Long ago and far away, in enchanted lands across the seas, lived kings and queens, princes and princesses, good fairies and wicked witches, ferocious giants and gentle dwarfs. Their adventures and stories have been told for hundreds of years. Open the pages and listen to the words, and you too can join the magical world of Once Upon a Time. The Selfish Giant Once upon a time, in a far-off country, there lived a giant. His home was as big as he was, because giants live in huge castles. This giant's castle was enormous, and it was surrounded by a splendid garden with all kinds of plants and inhabited by all sorts of pretty little creatures. There were birds in the trees, butterflies on the flowers, and children on the lawns. The children had great fun in the castle garden, which they entered through an opening in the surrounding wall. The giant himself could not stand them, but fortunately he was not there. Seven years before, he had gone to visit his monster friend, the Cornish Ogre, and had still not returned. So, after school, the little children slipped into the castle garden to play, running around and having fun. Then, one afternoon, the giant returned home unexpectedly and surprised the children who were busy enjoying his beautiful garden. Naturally, he lost his temper completely. A crowd of noisy whippersnappers have invaded my property, he snapped. This cannot be allowed. He began to shout with his giant voice. Get out! Get off my property! Go back to your own homes, you children, you midgets! The children were so frightened of his big, booming voice that they took to their heels, left the lawn, slipped through the space in the wall, and disappeared. The giant was happy to be back in complete possession of his beautiful garden. He didn't want to share it with anyone, and he was so possessive about it that straight away he began to protect it against invasion from outsiders. He decided to strengthen the surrounding wall, to close up every opening, and to plant a row of stinging nettles. The work was quickly done. When he'd finished the job, the giant hung up a sign which read simply and clearly, Trespassers will be prosecuted. The children continued to hang about the castle, longing for the garden where they used to play. Then, although it was spring elsewhere in the country, winter came to the giant's garden. The children came out to play again, but they didn't go back to the castle garden that had been closed to them. Spring didn't return to the castle garden either. It seemed to have forgotten to make the trees in the park blossom, and no birds sang on the branches. Frost, snow, and wind reigned in the selfish giant's castle and in his garden. Snow was happy that spring had forgotten to melt it. Frost, with its voice that made folks shudder, cried, I rule the ground with my icy fingers. And wind whistled all day. When Hale heard about the party that was going on in the giant's garden, he wanted to join in too. So he put on his best grey cloak and joined in the cold dance with frost, snow and wind. And the giant spent the day looking out of the window at the weather. A layer of cloud hung over the castle and stopped the sun from warming up the rooms. However many clothes the giant put on, he just couldn't get warm. So he shivered all day long. The giant spent more and more time in bed, 
listless and downhearted, listening to the moaning of the wind, the downpour of the rain, and the rattling of the hail. Then, one day, he heard singing coming from the garden. The giant made an effort to sit up in bed and managed to look out of the window. He could hardly believe his eyes. All the bad weather had gone and the birds were singing on the branches of the trees. Spring has returned to my garden, the giant shouted. And when he looked down into the garden, he saw that hail had opened up the hole in the surrounding wall again and the children had come back into the garden, bringing spring with them. Laughing happily, they ran about on the lawn and climbed the trees, and as if by magic, the grass became green and full of flowers again, and the plants were covered in new leaves, while little birds flew about happily everywhere. The giant was fascinated by what he saw, and it made him stop and think. He realized that it had been his own selfishness that had let gloom and misery reign for so long, where, thanks to the children's games, the joys of spring and the singing of the birds now triumphed. But there was one corner of the garden which was still held prisoner by the ice. A single tree, covered in snow, suffering from winter's bite. At its foot, there was a little child in a white tunic, who was too small to reach any of the branches of the tree. The little one's playmates were too busy having fun to notice anything. But the giant saw him struggling, and decided to put on his slippers and go out immediately to help him climb up the tree with its branches still covered in snow. It's time to turn over to side two. 